Common procedure in pediatric practice. Outline. Introduction. General rules. Restraints and positioning. Intramuscular injection. Subcutaneous injection. Intradermal injection. Venipuncture. Intravenous infusion. Arterial puncture. Intraosseous infusion. Lumbar puncture. LP. Thoracocentesis. Abdominal paracentesis. Liver biopsy. Tube feeding. Endotracheal intubation. Airway foreign body removal. Cardiac resuscitation. Introduction. Every pediatrician must learn the technique and develop skill in actually carrying out the frequently employed practical procedures, some therapeutic and others diagnostic. Most of these procedures can be performed beside in addition to the procedure room. General Rules Before actually carrying out a procedure, salient features of the procedure should be explained to the attendants and to the grown-up child. For all major procedures, such as lumbar puncture, liver biopsy or bone marrow aspiration, it is obligatory to obtain a written and signed consent from the parents. The chamber in which the procedure is carried out should be well lit, tidy, noise free and neither too cold nor too hot. The procedure should be performed under aseptive condition including scrubbing and hand washing. Adequate positioning and restraint of the child during the procedure are vital for the successful outcome of the procedure. Restraint and Positioning In order that a technical procedure is carried out successfully, particularly in infants, it is necessary to have the patient properly restrained and positioned. A struggling child will only lead to failure and disappointment. Some centers may have infant immobilization boards, which are useful in restraining the infants during procedures. Intramuscular injection. Usual sites. In infants and young children, anterolateral aspect of mid thigh. In older children, Upper and outer quadrant of buttocks, gluteal region. In children and adolescents, mid deltoid areas. Method Hold the child securely to prevent movement of extremity. Thoroughly clean the skin with an antiseptic sponge. Check the needle is not in a blood vessel by a slight aspiration. Inject the material completely and then withdraw. Subcutaneous injection. Preferable to use the outer aspect of child's upper arm. Method. Clean the area using appropriate agent, variable for different vaccine. Pinch up the skin with your fingers. Push a subcutaneous needle into the skin at an angle of about 60 degrees. Draw on the plunger to check if the needle is not in a blood vessel. Administer the drug. Intradermal injection. This route is most often used for administering BCG vaccine and tuberculin, Mantoux test. Method. Clean the area of skin appropriately. Support child arm with your non-dominant hand and use finger to stretch the skin. Holding the syringe in your dominant hand Almost flat on patient's skin, insert the needle into the skin with be well of needle facing up, taking care that only the needle tip enters skin.
Hold your non-dominant thumb to hold the syringe close to skin while you inject the material. Veni puncture. For veni puncture, the choice is a visible vein in the antecubital fossa, back of the hand, dorsum of the foot or scalp. If not easily available, one may puncture the femoral, external jugular or internal jugular vein. Collection of repeated blood samples, as in glucose tolerance test, may be done from a single veni puncture. Intravenous infusion In a newborn, umbilical vein may be handy for exchange transfusion. Up to the age of 4 or 5 years, scalp vein infusion serves well. In older children, an antecubital or wrist vein is usually good enough for intravenous infusion. As and when peripheral veins are not available in an emergency situation, such as shock, leading to collapsed peripheral veins, it may become necessary to use cephanous or femoral vein as such or by venesection. Arterial puncture It is particularly indicated for blood gas analysis and invasive blood pressure monitoring. The recommended sites are radial artery, brachial artery and temporal artery. Since an arterial puncture is often painful and may cause hyperventilation, it may well be in order to employ a local anesthesia. In case multiple samples of arterial blood are needed over a relatively shorter time, it is advisable to place an indwelling arterial line. An alternative to arterial blood is arterialized capillary blood, which may be obtained from a puncture over finger, heel, or earlobe provided that patient's tissue perfusion is good. Intraosseous Infusion In emergency situations when intravenous approach cannot be established, intraosseous infusion may be ideal. Fracture, osteogenesis imperfecta, osteoporosis, cellulitis, infected burns, etc., are its contraindications. The procedure is fairly safe. Nevertheless, occasionally complications include extravasation of fluid into subcutaneous tissues causing skin necrosis, local infection, cellulitis, osteomyelitis, epiphyseal insult causing tibial fracture and fat embolism. Bone marrow aspiration. For marrow puncture, the usual site and the method of choice for children is the iliac crest. Sternal puncture is hardly required in children. Lumbar puncture, LP. This procedure is best avoided in the presence of papilledema, in which case herniation of the medullary cone may prove dangerous. An imaginary line joining the two iliac crests passes through the fourth lumbar vertebra. A space above third intervertebral space or below fourth intervertebral space, this line may be chosen as the site of the lumbar puncture. Thoracocentesis The procedure is employed to remove pleural fluid or air both for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes, to induce pneumothorax or to inject antibiotics in cases of empyema. The chosen area is usually 8th or 9th intercoastal space in the posterior axillary line or the area of maximum dullness. Pericardial puncture The procedure is indicated in suspected pericardial effusion and for relieving cardiac embarrassment in cardiac tamponade due to collection of large amount of fluid or blood. Abdominal paracentesis Procedure is both diagnostic and therapeutic. It is a simple bedside procedure in which needle is inserted into the peritoneal cavity 
and acidic fluid is removed. Suprapubic bladder aspiration Useful in collection of urine without contamination in infants and young children as it is difficult with a normal voiding. 21 or 22 gauge needle is commonly used. Heel puncture It is useful for collecting capillary blood sample in neonates and young children for various hematologic, biochemical and blood gas analysis. Liver biopsy Liver biopsy may provide valuable information in primary diseases of the liver such as Indian childhood cirrhosis, other cirrhosis, hepatitis, unexplained hepatomegaly, as well as diseases like tuberculosis in which liver involvement may be secondary. Before doing a liver biopsy, it is important to ensure that the prothrombin time of the patient is within normal limits. In the presence of a bleeding diathesis, the procedure is best not done. Needles commonly used are true cut needle or Wim Silverman needle or Mengeni needle. Kidney biopsy Kidney biopsy is of value in evaluation of cases of nephrotic syndrome not responsive to usual therapy with corticosteroids, progressive renal failure of obscure cause, undiagnosed hematuria, and such conditions as systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE, for evaluation of response to therapy and prognosis of the disease, periodic biopsies are of greater value. If carefully done by an expert, kidney biopsy is a fairly safe procedure. Microscopic hematuria is usually seen in a large majority of the cases. It is transient and disappears in two to three days. Tube feeding LBW infants weighing less than 1200 gram or greater than 30 weeks gestation LBW infants weighing 1200 to 1800 gram or greater than 34 weeks gestation Baby getting tired quickly Baby taking more than 20 minutes to finish the feed if tube feeding is needed for several days, it should be passed through the nasal route into the esophagus and stomach. Endotracheal intubation Failure of bag and mask ventilation as well as medication When PPPV is needed When tracheal suction especially for aspiration of meconium is needed Diaphragmatic hernia Gastric lavage It is a very useful procedure in accidental poisoning except corrosives and hydrocarbons in managing upper gastrointestinal bleeding and for collecting samples of gastric secretions for diagnosis of acid fast bacilli. Don't use excessive force while passing the tube. Watch out for laryngospasm and bradycardia during the procedure. Removal of foreign body from airway Foreign body should be seriously suspected in case of spontaneous respiratory distress associated with coughing, gagging, stridor, cyanosis or wheezing. Don't try to remove it by finger sweep which may push it back and deep into the airway. In an infant, it is removed by back blow and chest thrust. In a child older than one year, it is done by Heimlich's maneuver. Cardiac resuscitation As soon as cardiac arrest is suspected, the following steps should be taken. Clear the airway. While the patient is supine on a firm surface, Place the heel of the hand over the lower part of the sternum. Press down firmly so as to depress the sternum by 1 to 5 cm. This needs to be repeated very fast, 90 to 120 times per minute. Palpability of a good femoral pulse 
is a reasonable sign of the adequacy of the force. Check the size of the pupils from time to time. Good response to light is a sensitive indicator of the adequacy of the massage. The fibrillating patient can often be made to have normal rhythm by employing an external defibrillator.